Debbie Gibson is back. Ready to go. Here we are in. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the channel, or welcome back if you're tuning in again. Love that. I am Bill, your host, for another episode of Umpteenth Time Hearing, where I'm building on this catalog of some obscure music, some lesser songs by perhaps some slightly more well-known artists, uh, artists that only had one song or one album. Uh, just generally trying to find a whole bunch of lesser-known pieces of music that even if you are familiar with this week's program or many of the artists that I've covered, some, more, many, there's got bound to be at least a few in there that you haven't heard before. I'm covering a whole bunch of genres. It's generally out of the 1980s, a few years, one side or the other sometimes. And the whole idea here is that this was based on the concept of having come across uh, first time hearing reaction videos and knowing that a lot of these songs, if I put them in requests, would get buried under much more popular songs that would have multiple requests and decided to just flip that dynamic around and see if my umpteenth time hearing might very well be your first time hearing. Now, over the last three weeks, I've been doing a series of songs with some more lighthearted lyrics and segueing during that time from folk music to sort of a bubblegum pop of uh, last week's artist, Julie Brown. And this week, I'm shifting gears again, going, uh, sticking with a fun lyric theme, but going into psychobilly. Uh, this is a style of music that combines traditional rockabilly with a punk rock attitude. Uh, first pioneered, really, by the Cramps uh, out of the 1970s New York City music scene. But the artists that we'll be listening to today are Mojo Nixon and Skid Roper, who collaborated on a series of albums in the mid-late 80s, culminating with a Greatest Hits album in 1990 before they parted ways. And these are folks who were unafraid to take pot shots at the celebrities of the day. Uh, right on their second release, 1986's EP, Get Out of My Way, came the song Stuffin' Martha's Muffin. Now, I mentioned at the end of last week's program that there would be, this week, be a couple of tie-ins to not just la one to last week and one to the week before. Last week's artist, Julie Brown, was also the name of a very popular MTV video jockey of the era. And being a video jockey on MTV early on back in the day, that was a thing. And one of the other video jockeys of that era was Martha Quinn. So you can probably guess who the song Stuffing Martha's Muffin is about. And despite that pot shot, uh, Mojo Nixon served as an occasional spokesperson for MTV off and on throughout the mid-late 80s until the release of 1989's al uh, their album Root Hog or Die with the song that we'll be hearing today, Debbie Gibson is pregnant with my two-headed love child. <laughs> now, for those who don't know, Debbie Gibson was a team pop star of the era. Uh, and because of that and the other uh, figures that they ta he takes pot shots in the song, MTV refused to play it. And Mojo Nixon then ended his relationship with MTV. And just for no other reason, even though I'm a big fan of Burn Down the Malls, I decided to go with this song. And I also mentioned that there would be two tie-ins. A couple of weeks back, uh, Nick Lowe, during the song uh, All Men Are Liars, made reference and took a shot at Rick Astley, and Mojo Nixon does the same thing in this song as you'll be hearing. Now, of these two, Skid Roper was the, the musician of the pair, although often credited with albums that you, you would not see on your standard rock album uh, instrument list. Uh, Macarena's mandolin, uh, kickbox percussion. In fact, on their debut eponymous album, he was simply credited as playing upright washboard and other stuff. Uh, and then, of course, that would mean Mojo Nixon was the uh, front man, uh, the lead vocalist, uh, primary songwriter, played some instruments of his own, including credited at one point with the Sonic Love Jug. Uh, and after they went their separate ways, he had continued with a, a solo career and also a career with his band, the Toad Lickers. Uh, Lickers, in this case, spelled like the booze, L-I-Q-U-O-R-S, in keeping with that same sensibility that I was talking about. And there's another story involving that band and a pot shot at another celebrity that I'll get to a little bit later. But for now, let's get back to the song that's the whole purpose of this week's program. Debbie Gibson is pregnant with my teenage, with my <laughs> two-headed love child. And before you, uh, if you need them, the lyrics are, of course, in the top pinned comment down below. Uh, don't forget while you're down there, please click on that subscribe button, the like button if you like this program and want to hear, see more programming like that where I'm exploring a whole bunch of varieties and genres. Uh, certainly appreciate any comments you have. Don't forget to click on that notification bell next time I have a post coming out once every week. But for now, let's get right to it. Mojo Nixon and Skid Roper. Debbie Gibson is pregnant with my teenage love child. Enjoy. Give 
Dixon is ready. We're my two-headed love child. It's a big foot, baby. All covered in fur now. Star craving naked in a bold occasion nation. We were secretly married. He is a pain in waste. Makes my butt his face. His teeny tiny two inches of turtle. Many are gonna scare you. Hey, baby, cock a baby, knuckle-headed is your loot. No truth to the rumor. Lots of words and damage. Oh, they went to the motel just to watch a little TV. Hey, that dog. And there we have it, folks. Uh, this week's commentary on tabloid journalism, Debbie Gibson is pregnant with my two-headed love child. And as a side note, I did a program on Joe Jackson a while back, and he has a great song called Sunday Papers, if you want to hear another take on that type of journalism. But going back to Mojo Nixon and Skid Roper, uh, this is one of a great many outstanding songs that they have. So if you like the sound of that and you're not as familiar with their catalog, I encourage you to take a dive down that rabbit hole for a little bit. And also, if you think that the actress playing Debbie Gibson in that video looked familiar, you are absolutely correct. That was Winona Ryder and what she describes as one of her favorite acting gigs of all time. And I'd also mention that as a solo artist, Don Henley had, uh, Don Henley, I'll get to him in a moment. Mojo Nixon had a great story associated with a uh, celebrity in a song, that celebrity being, in case you hadn't guessed, uh, Don Henley. Uh, off of his 1990 debut solo album, Otis, he had a song, Don Henley Must Die. And in 92, while performing at the Hole in the Wall Club in Austin, Texas, uh, Don Henley was in the audience. Uh, uh, Mojo Nixon, who's reasonably well-built, but not a big man, uh, and Don Henley, he's not Dwayne Johnson, but he was a lot bigger. And Mojo thought he was going to, you know, possibly get beat up or anything. He didn't know what was going to happen. And what happened was Don Henley joined him on stage and belted out the lyrics of that song like his life depended on it. Uh, Mojo Nixon was just blown away. It would have been great to be in the audience. I think probably 10 times or more as many people claim to have been there as actually were. <laughs> and, uh, of course, what else could Mojo Nixon do? He turned and asked if Debbie Gibson was in the audience as well. So anyway, that's going to wrap it up for this week's program. I hope you enjoyed it. Tune in next week. We'll be doing some another artist that is really, to my perspective, one of the granddaddies of obscure, uh, offbeat, absurdist kind of lyrics sometimes. I'm sure there's lots of others out there, but combined with their just really fun instrumentation. Although I am going to be covering a, more, a somewhat more serious song of theirs, at least touching on a serious subject. And this is an art... Uh, if you know this kind of music from this era, you'll know this artist, especially when I say that they are named after an even more obscure movie. But I'll explain all of that next week on the program for now. Thanks so much for watching. As always, may the best of your past be the worst of your future. Have yourselves a great day. Bye now. <laughs>